Hey guys, Eric Dragon Highlander here, back again with another deck tech, and this is going to be another one of my Not Enough Colors decks. Uh, I've built a few of these in the past. Um, just recently, I did a budget three-color Maze's End deck, um, and recently I did a two-color Planeswalker Super Friends deck as well. Just uh, working on decks that should be five colors or three colors and making them with fewer colors than they ought to have and seeing what I can do with that as a deck building restriction. Uh, so this is going to be another one kind of continuing along those lines. Uh, this is going to be a three color slivers deck. Uh, and of course there is no three color sliver commander. So we're doing Vadrock Apex of whatever it is, Thunder, Power, something like that. Uh, Vadrock. Anyways, it's one of the Ikoria mutate ones. It's the Jeskai one. Um, what's cool about Vadrock is that when it mutates onto a sliver, um, it can let you cast a non-creature spell with CMC 3 or less from your graveyard. Uh, so it's just a really cool kind of recursion value engine in Jeskai. Um, just a little bit of bonus. Uh, and it gives whatever it mutates underneath both flying and first strike. Obviously you want to mutate it underneath whatever sliver it's going in rather than over top because you want it to still maintain the sliver types so that it has all of the stuff. Um, yeah, anyways, that's the idea behind this deck. It's three color slivers um, and I had a really fun time building it and I've piloted it a couple times and it's really strong. Um, anyways, yeah, let's get into the deck. Thanks for being here guys. Let's go. All right, guys, as I said, this is going to be a Vadrock Apex of Thunder. There we go. We got there. Uh, Vadrock Apex of Thunder Mutate Sliver Tribal Deck. Um, so Vadrock is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three flying at first strike, but what we really want is that mutate ability because you mutate for 4, put it underneath the sliver, and when it mutates, you cast target non-creature card with CMC 3 or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. So we get recursion on some of our cool little pieces here. Um, yeah. So let's just get right into the slivers. Uh, so what's cool about this is I find that in five color sliver decks, um, they kind of do a little bit of everything and a whole lot of nothing. I mean, it's not to say slivers are weak. Slivers are very, very strong, um, but it's kind of jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, whereas when you go three color slivers, you can really focus down on the abilities and uh, just trim them down to exactly the sort of uh, the things you want. And you can get a lot more redundancy into a three color slivers deck. Uh, so there's gonna be metallic sliver, which is just a one-one sliver, you gotta have that. Uh, and then there's gonna be Gale Rider and Winged Sliver, which are gonna give all of our slivers flying. Cloud Shredder Sliver, which gives all of our slivers flying and haste. Uh, shadow Sliver, which is gonna give all of our slivers shadow, therefore unblockable. Shifting Sliver, which is gonna give all of our slivers can't be blocked except by slivers. Uh, and then we've got Two-Headed Sliver and Belligerent Sliver, which are going to give all of our Slivers Menace. So this is all the ways that we're going to force damage through with our Slivers. Uh, and then we've got some other kind of combat tricks. So there's going to be um, Sidewinder, which gives all of our Slivers Flanking, Sentinel Sliver, which gives them all Vigilance, and Essence Sliver, which gives them all Lifelink. Um, so those are all very, very useful to us as well. Uh, and then we've got uh, Striking Sliver, Talon Sliver, and Lancer Sliver, which are going to give them all First Strike. And then we've got Bone Scythe and Fury Sliver, which are going to give them all Double Strike. So again, we're focusing very heavily on combat with all of that. Uh, and then we've got Heart Sliver and Blur Sliver, which are going to be our Haste Enablers. Uh, and then we've got... A little bit of free damage, so there's going to be Lava Belly Sliver and Spiteful Sliver, so whenever a Sliver enters the battlefield, it's going to deal that much damage. Um, sorry, this is whenever uh, a creature enters the battlefield, deals one damage to a uh, player or Planeswalker in your game one life, and this one is whenever it deals damage, it deals that much damage to target player or Planeswalker. So it's basically double strike, but you can reassign the second strike. Um... Then we've got some go-wide kind of buffs that are going to make our whole team bigger. So there's going to be Plated Sliver, Sinew Sliver. Uh, we're running Metallic Mimic and Adaptive Adomaton because they give all of our slivers plus one plus one. Uh, and they count as slivers themselves. We're running Blade Sliver. Uh, Mirror Entity is a great one because it counts as all creature types. And uh, we can pay X to make all of our slivers base power and toughness XX till end of turn. Uh, and then we've got Magma Sliver, 
that uh, has tap target, or all slivers have tap target sliver gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of slivers in play. Yeah, very, very strong. Now we also have uh, a few other ways of buffing our board. So we've got Shared Triumph and Rally of the Ranks, Rally the Ranks, which gives all of our slivers plus one plus one. We've got Radiant Destiny, which gives all of our slivers plus one plus one, and Vigilance if we have Ascend, or the City's Blessing rather. Uh, we have Shared Animosity, so whenever a creature you control attacks, it gets plus one plus so until end of turn for each other attacking creature that shares a type with it. And we have Door of Destinies, so whenever we cast a sliver, we put a charge counter on it, and then all of our slivers get plus one plus one for each charge counter on it. So that gets out of hand very, very quickly. Uh, we're running a little bit of a removal package as well, so there's Constricting Sliver. Uh, whenever a sliver enters the battlefield, we basically Oblivion Ring something from the battlefield. Uh, we've got Grasp of Fate, which removes three things. We've got Harsh Mercy, which uh, destroys all creatures that aren't of a chosen type. Uh, so we name slivers. Uh, we've got Blasphemous Act, which is a board wipe there. Uh, we've got some protection for our slivers as well. So there's Unsettled Mariner that gives them all Ward 1. Uh, we've got Diffusion Sliver, which gives them all Ward 2. We've got Crystalline Sliver, which gives them all Shroud. We've got Frenetic Sliver, which basically, if any of our slivers would die, they instead have a 50-50 chance of dying because we can flip a coin and either blink it or we can lose the flip and it'll die. Um, then we have Opaline Sliver that says whenever uh, a sliver we control becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, we may draw a card. So it basically disincentivizes people from targeting our stuff. Uh, and then we have Ward Sliver that gives slivers we control protection from the chosen color. So that's going to be a lot of ways to keep our board alive. We have even more ways to keep our board alive. There's going to be Grand Crescendo. Uh, which gives creatures we control indestructible, uh, and they shall know no fear, which gives slivers indestructible, and plus one plus O, oh. uh, Boros Charm, which gives permanents we control indestructible, Second Sunrise, which returns everything to the battlefield after we've been board wiped, Cosmic Intervention, which does the same thing, Teferi's Protection, which phases everything out, and uh, Savine's Reclamation, which can return uh, multiple permanents from the battlefield, from the graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, what's great about Savine's Reclamation is that we can recast it with Vadrock, um, and that does count as casting it from the graveyard, so it gets the bonus copy of itself as well. Um, and what's cool about that too is that we can actually, you know, recast something like And They Shall Know No Fear by using Vadrock's ability. And even though it's not, we're not flashing Vadrock in, it does have like give them all plus one plus so. So that can help us close out a game. Um, or we can, you know, recast a Grasp of Fate or a Harsh Mercy or anything like that. You know, we can recast a Shared Animosity with Vadrock's ability if it gets removed. Um, so he's really, really cool in the command zone for that. Uh, just kind of getting us our stuff back. We are also running a whole bunch of ways to draw into these slivers. Uh, so there's going to be a Synapse Sliver. So whenever a sliver deals combat damage to a player, we draw a card. Uh, then there's Mystic Remora, Ristic Study, and Military Intelligence card draw. Uh, Folk Hero that says Commander Creatures we control have whenever we cast a spell that shares a type with it, we draw a card. So obviously Vadrock is going to be underneath. It still counts as our commander, but it's a sliver. So whenever we cast a sliver, we draw the card once per turn. And again, bear in mind that all this stuff is recastable, not the creatures, because you can't cast creatures with them, but all this other stuff is recastable with Vadrock's ability. Uh, then we've also got Kindred Discovery. So whenever a creature we control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. So we can just windmill slam that Kindred Discovery and then attack with five slivers and draw five cards. Um, that's pretty powerful. Uh, and we're also playing Jessica's Will. Uh, so Jessica's Will can add us a bunch of red mana, and then we can exile the top three cards of our library as well, uh, as long as we control our commander. What's cool about Jessica's Will is we can uh, pay the three, add, say, three or four red mana, and then cast Vadrock off of that red mana, because he takes uh, two red and a colorless. So even if it's only three, right? If we have one other white or blue mana. So we can cast the Vadrock off of the Jessica's Will, which is then resolved in our graveyard. When Vadrock enters, it's mutating, and then we can recast the Jessica's Will with it. 
Um, so that's really, really cool. Um, I really, really love that. I think it's super fun. And we get two Jessica's Wills in one turn, using one to pay for the Vadrock to bring it back the other one. Uh, I did that in a game recently, and it was very, very fun, and just tons and tons of value off of that. Uh, and we also have uh, some ramp. We want to get lots of mana so that we can cast all these slivers that we're drawing, and we want to make sure we have enough mana to uh, cast the Vadrock super early as well. Uh, so we've got Mox Tantalite, Arcane Signet, uh, Pillar of Origins, naming slivers, of course, Surveyor's Scope, uh, Oath of Lieges is really fun. So for each player, if that player controls fewer lands than an opponent, that player can search the library for a basic land, put it into play. Uh, that, I think, is super fun. Just keeps everybody kind of moving along with all of their mana. Uh, we've also got Smuggler's Share, Smothering Tithe. Uh, everybody knows those cards. You know, we're just making mana, drawing cards. Uh, and then there's Descent into Avernus, which is going to help us close the game as well as pump out a whole bunch of treasures for us so that we can cast all these slivers. Uh, then we've got a few lands that I just need to talk about because this is a three color deck and uh, we wanna make sure that we're getting our slivers out and our mana right. Uh, so there's gonna be Command Tower, uh, Mana Confluence, City of Brass, uh, Path of Ancestry, all of these add mana of any color to our mana pool. Uh, what's fun about Path of Ancestry is that if we already have the Vadrock mutated underneath a sliver, uh, if we cast a sliver, then we get to scry one every time with this. Um, secluded Courtyard, uh, we can cast it, uh, we, can, we can tap it for the mana to uh, cast a sliver, of course. Uh, Unclaimed Territory does slivers, Cavern of Souls does slivers, and also uh, says that they can't be countered. Uh, and then Sliver Hive also taps for a man of any color to cast slivers, and we can use it to make 1-1 one, one slivers as well. Uh, yeah, and that's the deck. I mean, it's really just a bunch of slivers and then a bunch of Jeskai good stuff and then Vadrock to bring it all back over and over and over again. Uh, lots of card draw, lots of protection, lots of aggro kind of forcing damage through, um, lots of tribal kind of making all of our board bigger. Yeah. Just super simple deck, very, very fun. Gets out of control very quickly uh, if you let it. Anyways, guys, that's the deck. Uh, I don't really have much else to say about it. Please uh, let me know what you think down in the comments if uh, you like the idea of going with a non-sliver commander for a three-color sliver deck. Uh, I had a lot of fun kind of playing around with it. I, I messed with a couple different color combinations before I got here. Um, and I think this is the one because it lets you focus really heavily on the protection and the double strike and the card draw, like you really get everything you really want in these three colors for a tribal aggro deck. Uh, I think specifically with slivers as well, because you get like the flying and the, the shadow and the card draw stuff with the blue, and then you get all the double strike and the and stuff like that with the white and the red, and you get the lifelink and the protection stuff with the Azorius ones. Yeah, I, I really, really like it. Um, anyways, Please go down to the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah. And take care. And we'll see you in the next one.